And it was something about how he, how he kind of played me off. I was like, I'll write four episodes and I'll still have it to you by Friday at noon. He was like, if you do that, you would be impressing me. I know that you're on the show right now. What's the name of the show? Family Time. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And you write on that show too, right? Yeah, I've been writing on that show uh, since season two. Yeah. Interestingly enough, man, and when I say this, Bentley Kyle Evans, I would not have a career if it was not for him. Uh, actually, I can even, that's an understatement. The entire Evans family, it goes from Niall Evans, who's the producer of Wild and Out, Stacey Evans Morgan, who wrote on Living Single. She wrote on The Parker. She's an amazing producer as well. And Bentley Kyle Evans, uh, as a family, have been the only reasons that I have <laughs> made money in this business for the past eight years. Um, and it was all, it all circled back to my wife, Tangerine. It, it began, I've been a fan of Bentley Kyle Evans since I was a kid, because if you don't know Bentley Kyle Evans, Bentley Kyle Evans is the show creator for the Jamie Foxx show. And he was the executive producer of Martin. You understand him and Martin are best friends. They've been friends for like 30 years and he helped shape number one, my sense of humor and two, why I wanted my own sitcom as a kid, watching Martin and a Jamie Foxx show, like that made, Martin Lawrence off top made me want to be a comedian. And to have my own sitcom and to be on a sitcom was my style of comedy. So even when you look at my sketches, you'll see it's almost like a sitcom. Like I, I, I liken it to uh, a single cam or a multi-cam sitcom, even though it's single cam. But Billy Kyle Evans uh, was producing a show called Love That Girl in 2010. And I have been trying my best to meet this brother because I'm like, yo, I'm a writer. I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. I'm your next guy. Like, let's go. And there was a there was a woman working in, uh, working, I won't put her out there like that. She was working with him and she tried her best to keep me away from this dude. I'm talking about never would let me know when auditions were, she would uh, literally just try her best to have me away from him. So at the time, Tangerine and I, you know, we began seeing each other and she had done a show called The Rib with Bentley. And I was like, yo, Bentley's doing that show? Yo, I would love to meet him. And she was like, just come to the set. I'm like, for real? I get to the set. I see the girl. And she's like, what are you doing here? Who, who, who are you here to see? And I was like, don't worry about it. Just know that you ain't let me in here, right? So... Uh, I meet Bentley, but I met him unlike I wanted to meet him. I met him in a sense of, you know, Tangerine introduces me. Hey, this is Clayton Thomas. He's a writer. He's a comedian. And he gave me the look like, yeah, you are a boyfriend, man. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, I got to meet this brother in a different circumstance. So the rev doesn't go. So fast forward, almost simultaneously, uh, Niall Evans was doing a, a Twitter a Twitter series called Trending Funny. And he had reached out to me. He was like, hey, man, Trending Funny is this uh, is this little comedy short I want to do where comedians say funny things about trending topics. He was way ahead of his time because that's stuff that would still work now. I'm saying it, so hopefully he does it now. But uh, So I did that with Niall, and at the same time that the rib didn't go, I'm like, all right, so now next time I see Bentley, he'll at least see that I performed a little bit, you can see. And um, I didn't run into him until a year later where they had done Family Time Season 1. So, Family Time Season 1 comes out, Tangerine is on the show with Omar Gooding, Angel Conwell, and I go to the, the premiere. I go up to Bentley. I say, hey, man, uh, I am a writer. I would love to uh, be one of your writers. And he's like, well, we don't have a traditional writer's room, but, um, you, know, uh, you know, I'll keep an eye out for you. And I was like, hey, man, I'll write a spec script of your show. And he was like... <laughs> Yeah, all right. And I was like, no, for real, I'll send you the script. It was a Tuesday. I'm like, I'll send you the script Friday at noon. And he was like, you're going to write a script that fast? And I was like, yes. He was like, okay. And it was something about how he, how he kind of played me off. I was like, I'll write four episodes, and I'll still have it to you by Friday at noon. He was like, if you do that, you would be impressing me. I was like, done, right? I leave the event. I'm home. I'm typing. I'm typing. I write four scripts. I finished the fourth script at 11.55 a.m. that Friday morning, right? Send. I hit send. He he calls me. He's like, listen, man, 
without even reading these, you're a man of your word, and I'm going to mess with you forever because this is something that I did. I did this, and that's what helped me get the job on Martin because he showed Martin that he could write scripts. He wrote these scripts, and he went to Martin's uh, trailer. I think he was working on House Party or House Party 2, and he gave him the scripts, and Martin looked them over and brought them with him. And Martin gave him his first writing job for the Martin show, which changed his life, you know. Um, so I'm like, all right, thank you, man, right? I'm excited. I'm telling everybody, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm a writer, man. I'm for real writing right now. I'm about to do it. I don't hear from Bentley for like a year, right? So now at this point, I'm pissed. I'm mad, man. I'm like, so, so you just going to, because you know, in your mind, when somebody doesn't hit you, you're automatically thinking, yeah, they over there making millions of dollars and they didn't forget about me. Like you just create these scenarios in your head, right? So I'm mad. I don't know the business. I don't understand that things take time. I'm just pissed. So I run into Stacy at the comedy club. And uh, I approached Stacy so wrong. Like, Stacy is an angel. She's a sweetheart. I came to her wild as hell, right? She sits down. I'm like, yeah, so uh, I sent your brother them scripts. I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> and she was like, well, send them to me. And I was like, yeah, all right, well, what's your email, right? I send her the email and the scripts. She calls me three days later. And she says, hey, I read your scripts. Um, they were good. You know, a little bit of formatting issues. Because in TV, you got to do double space. In film, you do single space. And I wrote them all single space. And she was like, how would you like to come in and pitch some ideas for Love That Girl? Which was full circle for me because he was working on Love That Girl when the show with the young lady wouldn't let me come in and meet him. And now I get to pitch ideas for this show, Right. So she was like, write down about three or four ideas. I'm like, cool, cool. I wrote 23 ideas. I come in the room. I'm pitching ideas. I'm like, hey, what do you think of this? Uh, not interested in that. All right, cool. You don't like that? That's cool. What do you think of this? And I just kept going until something landed. So uh, I get a script. I wrote it. And the pay for the script, I find out. I'm thinking it's like $500 or $1,000, which I would have been happy with. I had nothing. And uh, I find out that that particular script was ten grand. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Bow. I'm like, yo, 10 grand when you have nothing? I bought a car. I fixed all of my bills. Like, it changed my life. And uh, from that point, then another year goes by, and he was doing a show called My Crazy Roommate. I come in as an actor. I audition. I booked the role because they didn't know I can act. They just knew that I was a writer. I booked the role. It was very funny. Another year goes by. And now, I can't say that, it was probably like six months, he's doing a show called Family Time. Now he's doing season two, right? I'm writing on this. I got the writing gig for it. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm probably a shoe-in on the acting side because I just acted on one of his other shows. And uh, he had forgotten about that. Like, you know, in Hollywood, people don't remember everything that you do. You have to constantly remind them. So we're writing, and Corey Holcomb was on Family Time season one. I'm excited to work with Corey for season two because I'm like, man, you helped me so much when I got to L.A., and in my life, and now I get a chance to work with you. Um, unfortunately, Corey was working on Black Jesus, and he couldn't do the show. So what ended up happening was they had to split his character into two different characters. So I'm you know, telling all my comedian friends to come in and audition. They're auditioning. And in the middle of one of the auditions, I'm like, yo, I would love to read this role, right? So I hollered Bill and said, hey, man, can I read for you? He was like, yeah but you got to go up after all your friends. I'm like, oh, because my boys were coming in, killing it, okay? I'm nervous because I'm like, it's one sense that you're like, yo, you should know that I'm a good actor. I did the one episode, remember, of all the shows you do, I did one episode. And then, you know, your boys are coming in, killing it, and I'm just super nervous. And I go in, and I, I shed up all that nervousness, man, and I did my best. And they were like, all right, leave the room. We'll let you know. Damn. And uh, my agent called me the next day and was like, you got it. And I'm like, oh, and that role changed my life. Like, here we are right now in the middle of filming season seven. And this all happened in season two. Um, and, of course, from that, Niall Evans continued to hire me. He was working on Wild and Out. He brought me in to uh, write on some of the games, like help create some games for the show, get to meet Nick Cannon, make another relationship. And... Uh, Stacy produced our own show and had me involved in it. And because of them, I've just been able to work. And it's all 
stemmed from my amazing wife introducing me to the Evans family. So, uh, Bentley, I would not have a career if it were not for the Evans family and Bentley Ballads. 